Good morning, everyone. This is Robert Rivera. This is the meeting of the Texas Lottery Commission called uh, now to order. Uh, today is December 3rd. The time is 10 a.m. Uh, first, we're going to do a roll call of the commissioners. Start with Commissioner Fields. Commissioner Franz, are you there? Fields? Franz is here. Franz is here. Okay. Uh, we'll go on to signs. Here. Commissioner Steen. Here. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Fields? Here. Okay. Perfect. We have a quorum. Uh, this meeting is conducted on Zoom pursuant to Governor Abbott's temporary suspension of certain open meeting laws during COVID-19 and disaster declaration. As stated in the meeting notice, public comment requests were due by 5 p.m. yesterday. For the benefit of the audience and our court reporter, we will ask every speaker to state their name before they speak. Uh, before we start, I wanna let everyone know, everyone know that since our last meeting, Governor Abbott designated Commissioner Fields as our bingo commissioner. The bingo commissioner is a position that is required by our governing statute. And this announcement is great news for the bingo program and the Texas bingo industry. Commissioner Fields brings a wealth of experience in business and state government that, and we thank her for her willingness to serve in this important position. Uh, Commissioner Fields, do you, do you have a few words um, so far in your um, few weeks in? Yeah, um, I've, I've already started working with Tom and it's been a real pleasure. I'm, I'm glad to serve in this capacity and uh, I, I think we can, we can do some good things with, um, with charitable bingo. So I'm glad to, glad to be here. Wonderful. Well, I, I know that um, you've hit the ground running and I've heard from lots of folks regarding your involvement and in, in the action items ahead that we'll in part discuss uh, later in this meeting. So uh, thank you for your commitment to Texas Bingo. Okay, um, the first item is the biannual security study of the lottery. Uh, Mike, this is your item. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. For the record, my name is Mike Fernandez and I'm the Director of Administration. Item two in your notebook is a presentation of the 2020 Biennial Security Study of the Texas Lottery Commission. The Government Code 466-020 request requires the Executive Director at least once every two years employ an independent firm to conduct a comprehensive security study of all aspects of lottery security, stipulating the 12 specific areas that must be reviewed. The act further requires copies of the study be provided to the commission, the governor and legislature. A copy of the public report will be placed on the agency website and the appropriate offices notified of its availability. The 2020 security study was conducted by Barry Dunn. With me this morning is Christopher Ellingwood, Senior Manager, Information Technology Assurance, to present the study. I will now turn it over to Chris. Chris, it's yours. Great, thank you, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Mike said, my name is Christopher Ellingwood. I am a Senior Manager at our Information Technology and Lottery Services Group at Barry Dunn. Um, I'd like to just talk briefly on the uh, process for which we conducted the security study. Uh, I'll introduce you to just a little background of the firm and uh, very present some very high level results of the, um, the security study. Uh, Barry Dunn is headquartered out in Portland, Maine, and uh, my team and my group specializes in lottery services. Uh, on a given year, we're providing approximately 30 audits to state lottery agencies and their vendors around security and internal controls. Uh, we also work with lotteries in the United States, all over the United States, the Caribbean, Canada, and Europe. 
Uh, we've worked with uh, new lotteries and new systems, including digital sports book, and we have a wide gamut and view into emerging products throughout the industry. And uh, this is our third time working with the Texas Lottery on the security study. And uh, we have been working in the industry since 1995. I have a dedicated team of about eight people who work full time in the lottery with me. Uh, we want to uh, really thank Mike Fernandez, Eric Williams, Joan Cottle, and Jason Kennedy for helping us through the security study. As you know, with COVID, uh, things are a little different this year. And we started our security study on site at the Texas Lottery offices. And that was actually our last business trip of 2020 before we were grounded from the pandemic. Uh, we were very fortunate that working with, with the Texas Lottery personnel, um, the flexibility given to us and the, the willingness and effort of everyone who works the lottery to get us the needed information, spend a little extra time on Microsoft Teams meetings, sharing screens, running the computer and showing us things that normally would be a lot more efficient done in person, but we got through it. Uh, this year, um, as always, our, our, um, our security study consists of three phases, a planning phase, a risk phase, and the assessment phase. Uh, as I mentioned, this is our third year doing the security study for the Texas Lottery, and uh, we want to comment on the success and the investment they have made over past recommendations. And we've noted a lot of new technology, new system upgrades, a new focus for IT security that was put in place. So with that, we spent our first part of our phasing, planning phase, understanding the new changes that were made and some of the new products, especially around the installation of the in-lane system, the in-lane sales system and the quick tickets. We interviewed approximately 22 managers and high level personnel um, throughout nearly every department of the lottery. Uh, and we identified about 169 risk, which are based on best practice uh, and current procedures within the lottery. From those 169 risk and through our meetings, we identified 199 internal controls that are in place throughout the agency to mitigate those risk. And we provided the Texas Lottery with a detailed report that uh, broke down all of the risk and what those results were. This also included an assessment of vendors, including IGT and other new vendors uh, that were put in place throughout the last two years. Uh, the second phase is that we came in and we tested those 199 controls for their operating effectiveness throughout a two year period since when the last security study was performed. We tested this through inspection of documents, sampling, interviews, and observation of system configurations. Uh, while we were doing this, we were also looking for opportunities based on our industry experience on controls that were happening, processes, and uh, seeking opportunities for improvement and best practices. At the result of our report, we did have one finding noted around internal controls uh, where one control was not performed and it is my understanding that's been addressed. Uh, we also provide the lottery with 10 uh, best practice recommendations, seven were moderate risk, three were low risk. None of the risk or findings would impact uh, the security or the integrity of any of the games, systems, or products within the Texas Lottery, as, as also noted. A lot of our recommendations and best practices were focused around uh, some of the new systems that were put in place, virtualization of computing systems, and some third-party management as new products are introduced to the Lottery. Uh, that is all I have to present to you. Are there any questions or anything else, please let me know. And again, thank you everyone at the lottery for their help. It was a wonderful experience and unique for all of us. And we got through it with, with the COVID pandemic. Okay, wonderful 
uh, presentation and information. Uh, commissioners, any discussion? Okay, uh, next item is the 2020 demographic report on lottery players. Ryan, this is your item. Good morning, for the record, Chairman and Commissioners. My name is Ryan Mendel, Director of Lottery Operations. As you know, Section 466021 of the State Lottery Act requires the Executive Director to conduct a demographic study of Texas lottery players every two years. The results of the study must be presented to the commission, the governor, and the legislature prior to each legislative session. Item three in your notebook is the 2020 demographic study. Here today is Dr. Gail Budor, co-director of the Survey Research Institute at the University of Houston's Hobby School of Public Affairs. And she will present to you the results of the demographic study. With that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Bedor. Good morning and thank you for having me. As Ryan uh, mentioned, my name is Gail Bedor from the Hobby School of Public Affairs. I'm also joined by Dr. Jen Granado, who's the Associate Dean of the, um, of the Hobby School at the University of Houston. Um, we're here today to present the results of the 2020 demographic survey of Texas lottery players. The next slide, please. Okay, while they are working on the, the slides, I can just go ahead and get started. The survey was conducted between um, August 24th and September 15th, 2020. We had a sample size of 1,687. Um, we conducted this survey um, by both phone and online. So the distribution was 64% of respondents were contacted via phone and 36% of respondents were contacted online. Um, the margin of error for the survey was plus or minus 2.4% and that's at a 95% confidence level. Okay, next slide please. Okay. So compared to 2018, we saw about a 3.2 percentage points um, increase in the participation rate. So among all respondents, 45.2% reported playing the Texas lottery um, at some point during the past year. In terms of demographic differences between players and non-players among survey respondents, um, we found statistically significant differences for those Characteristics including income, employment status, whether respondent owns or rents their home, whether they have children under 18 living in the household, gender and Hispanic origin. In terms of amount spent, we saw an increase over the past um, few years from $13, and this is the median dollar spent, $13 in 2016, $25 in 2018, and finally 20. In 2020, we had $36 um, uh, in terms of the median amount spent. Next slide, please. In terms of participation rates by the lottery sales districts, the highest participation rates were in McAllen, Waco, and Houston East. And McAllen had a participation rate of 58.6, Waco of 52.8, and Houston East of 52.7. The lowest sales districts by participation rate were Tyler, Fort Worth, and Houston West. The highest average expenditure per month was in El Paso, and that average was $82.93 per month. And the highest median expenditure per month was in the McAllen sales district with $56 um, dollars per month on average. Next slide, please. Okay, in terms of which games were had the highest participation rate, Lotto Texas remained the most popular by far with 74% of respondents saying they played it at least once in the last year. 
This was followed by Scratch with a participation rate of 70.4%. Uh, Pick three with 60.7% participation rate. Mega Millions with a participation rate of 56.8 and Powerball with a participation rate of 51%. In terms of highest average expenditure per play, this was um, for the Fireball feature with pick three and that um, average expenditure was $24.82 per play. Um, the game and feature with the highest average number of times played was Fireball feature with daily four, and this had an average of 2.79 times per week played among respondents. And finally, daily four was played, um, had the highest average play per month at 5.17 times per month. Next slide, please. Okay, and um, as for the average number of times played, whether weekly, monthly, or annually, compared to 2018, we saw um, stable participation for Lotto Texas, or stable or increases for Lotto Texas, Mega Millions, All or Nothing. Um, Scratch was stable or down for the number of times played weekly, monthly, or annually. And we had mixed results for Powerball, Pick 3, Cash Five, Mega Player, and the others listed there. In terms of average dollars spent per play, um, the games that were either stable or had increases compared to 2018 were Lido Texas, Scratch, Mega Millions, Powerball, Pick Three, Cash Five, Mega Player, Power Play, Extra, Texas Two Step, All or Nothing, and finally Daily Four. Next slide, please. Okay, this figure shows the participation rate over the last um, 27 years. So, you know, from the mid 90s, we've seen a decrease in the participation rate of Texas lottery. However, over the past, you know, five or six years, it has been steadily increasing. And um, from 25% in 2014 to now in 2020, we have a participation rate of 45.2%. Next slide, please. And this table highlights participation rates and some key changes for, um, for the games and features. So as mentioned earlier, Lotto Texas had the highest participation rate in 2020 with about 75% of players um, having played it at least once during the last year. In terms of changes in participation rate from 2018 to 2020, Powerball saw the largest decrease uh, it had a decrease in its participation rate of 5.4%. And pick three saw the highest increase in its participation rate with 19% increase from um, the participation rate in 2018. In terms of frequency of purchase, as noted earlier, daily four um, was, um, had high uh, frequency of purchase and for both at least one. So for both weekly and monthly, um, and the average number of times played um, per week and per month, as noted um, previously, were for um, uh, daily four and the fireball feature with daily four. So that was 2.79 on average per week and five, um, about five times per month for daily four. And again, the highest average percent was 24, sorry, the highest average amount um, spent per play was for Fireball feature with pick three at about $25. Next slide, please. And that's um, uh, all we have today. And we're happy to answer any questions that anyone may have about um, the presentation or results contained in the, the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. That was definitely a lot of uh, information and very much appreciated. Uh, commissioners, any discussion? Okay, you, Gail, definitely handled a lot of information very thoroughly to the point that no one has any, okay, any uh, discussion so items. So thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item is a report from the Bingo Advisory Committee. 
Trey Smith will present. Tracy, are you there? Chairman, this is Bob Beard. Uh, Trace is uh, with us and we just need to uh, get our tech folks to unmute him on his telephone. He, he dialed in today. Trace, you'll need to unmute your phone on your side. I've asked you to unmute and you have the ability to talk. Could be Trace has some uh, tech. Okay, let's move on then to item number five, uh, procurement for Internal Audit Service, Mike, this is your item. And we'll come back uh, when we get Trace back online. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, for the record, my name is Mike Fernandez and I'm the Director of Administration. Item five in your notebook is an action item. Staff is seeking commission approval to issue a request for proposals for internal audit services. Uh, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, I'd be happy to answer any questions. That That is an action item and will require a, a vote of the commission to proceed. Correct. Okay. Is there a motion to proceed with the procurement? This is Eric. I make a motion. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wonderful. Mike, good job. Uh, Trace, are you there? Okay, we'll move on to item number six, um, lottery rule proposal. Kyle, this is your item. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. For the record, I'm Kyle Wolf, Assistant General Counsel. Item six in your notebooks contains a proposal to amend three rules. Rule 401.305, the Lotto Texas Draw Game Rule. Rule 401.312, the Texas Two-State Draw Game Rule. And Rule 401.317, the Powerball Draw Game Rule. Specifically, the proposed amendments to the Lotto Texas Draw Game Rule and the Texas Two-Step Draw Game Rule provide that the drawings for those games will occur on the days and times specified by the Commission's Executive Director, which may be days and times other than the rules currently provide. And the amendment for the Powerball Draw Game Rule provides that Powerball drawings will occur on the days specified by the Multi-State Lottery Association Powerball Group and announced by the Executive Director, which also may be days other than the rule currently provide. The purpose of these proposed amendments is to provide the commissioner greater flexibility to coordinate the draw date and times for its jackpot draw game to maximize potential revenue to the state. So staff recommends the, com the commission initiate the rulemaking process by publishing the proposed amendment in the text register to receive public comment for a period of 30 days. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Kyle, thank you so much. Commissioners, any discussion? Okay, is there a motion to publish the proposal for public comment? This is Jamie, so moved. All righty, a second? I'll second. Wonderful, all in favor say aye. 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 Per perfect, okay. Uh, Trace, are you there? Okay. Uh, let's move on then to item number seven, which is a report on lottery sales and revenue. We got Kathy and Robert. Morning, commissioners. And we'll give um, our IT team a few seconds to get the PowerPoint loaded. Here we are. My name is Kathy Pica, controller for the agency. With me presenting this morning is the Commission's Products Manager, Robert Terloni. 
Our presentation this morning will begin with the data on slide two. Comparative cells through the week ending November 28th, 2020 are presented at the bottom of this slide. Total fiscal year 2021 cells through this 13 week period are $1,740,000,000, million, an increase of $303 million or 21% over the $1,440,000,000 million same period last fiscal year. Fiscal year 2020 scratch ticket sales reflected on the second orange bar are $1,443,000,000, which is a $270,000,000 increase over the sales figure for fiscal year 2020. With a growth rate of 23% over last fiscal year, the commission has continued to report double digit increases over fiscal year 2020 sales. We have now had 33 consecutive weeks of scratch ticket sales over $100 million beginning with the week ending April 17th of last fiscal year. Scratch ticket sales amount to 82.8% .8 of total sales through this period as compared to 81.5% last fiscal year. Fiscal year 2021 draw sales reflected on the second blue bar are $300 million, which is a $33 million increase or 12.4% over the $266.9 million reported for last fiscal year. With the exception of Mega Millions, every draw game is reporting year over year increases this fiscal year. Robert will now provide an overview of detailed cells as outlined on slide three. Thanks, Kathy. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and commissioners. Um, this next slide is a comparison of fiscal 2021 to last fiscal, fiscal year 20, and it's through last Saturday, uh, November 28th. We can start at the top of the slide with the jackpot games in the white font. Our jackpot games are up just over $20 million year over year. The majority of that gain is actually coming from our in-state game, Lotto Texas, our big in-state game. Uh, Lotto Texas is up 14.4 million and its add-on feature extra is up 4.7 million. So we're seeing a nice uh, $19 million gain from Lotto and its add-on. That's because of the Lotto jackpot that began rolling uh, last fiscal year and it continued to roll all the way into the beginning of this fiscal year. Uh, and it ended up with a $47 million advertised jackpot in early September. So that's, the, that, that's a pretty high jackpot for our in-state game. So that's the reason for that gain there. Uh, Mega Millions is down slightly. Um, this time last year, um, Mega Millions had climbed up to $243 million. And we are just now uh, getting up to that level. Uh, the current jackpot is $244 million for tomorrow night for Mega Millions. So, you know, if we can keep that game rolling, um, we should be able to make up some of that deficit. So we'll have to see what happens there. Powerball and its associated add-on game Power Play are up about 4.9 million. So really the gain from Powerball and the loss from Mega Millions are kind of netting out to zero. Um, different situation with Powerball, the highest the jackpot got um, this time last year was about 150 million. And now we're at 243 million for Saturday's uh, drawing. So um, that's the reason for that gain. And we certainly hope to see that gain increase. And our smaller in-state jackpot game, Texas Two-Step is doing well. It's up a million dollars. Continuing down into the middle of the slide, we're getting uh, some great results from our daily games. The daily games are up 12.8 million with the majority of that gain coming from pick three with its add-on fireball. Uh, we've got an $8.6 million gain from those products. 
Daily Four with the same add-on feature. Fireball is also doing well with a $2 million gain. We are seeing some slight gains from Cash Five and All or Nothing. So our draw games as a whole are up $33 million year over year. Continued great scratch ticket performance. We're at just about 1.44 billion for the year, and that's giving us a $270 million gain for the scratch portion of the portfolio. And so all told, we're realizing a $303 million gain for the entire portfolio. We can move to the next slide. Commissioners, I wanted to provide you with a brief update today on our contributions to Texas veterans, specifically the Fund for Veterans Assistance, which benefits more than 1.5 million veterans in the state of Texas. To date, the Texas Lottery has generated more than $144 million for Texas veterans since our first game was launched in the fall of 2009. And this total includes our record-breaking contribution of $22.2 million in fiscal year 2020, which was last year. On November 7th, Commissioner Franz represented the agency during a pre-recorded presentation, which was shown during halftime at the University of Texas Longhorn football game, where he presented representatives of the Texas Veterans Commission with a ceremonial check reflecting our total contributions to the Fund for Veterans Assistance. And we wanted to share the video of this presentation with you today. Longhorn fans, as we salute our veterans, now we welcome the Commissioner of the Texas Lottery Commission, Mark France. And joining him is the Chairwoman of the Texas Veterans Commission, Laura Kerner, and the Executive Director of the Texas Veterans Commission, Thomas Palladino. You know, it's through the support of the Texas Lottery's dedicated veteran-themed scratch games, the best in the country, the Texas Veterans Commission Fund for Veterans Assistance is able to make these grants available to our veterans and organizations to provide the services to Texas veterans and their families that they wouldn't get otherwise. With over one and a half million veterans across our state, these programs are vital for financial assistance and transportation services, post-traumatic stress disorder counseling, housing assistance, and the long list. And since 2009, it's been the Texas Lottery that's contributed more than $144 million in the funding of these programs that directly benefit our Texas veterans. Now, please join us as we all thank the Texas Lottery and our veterans for their service. So commissioners, that was a great presentation and it, uh, in a, a presentation in that setting uh, certainly calls attention to our efforts to help support uh, Texas veterans. And so we we're glad to be able to show that to you today. And that concludes the sales presentation. Kathy or I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Wonderful uh, presentation, as always, wonderful video. Um, it, it, was, uh, it was really nice to see and nice to see uh, smiling faces there, not having to wear the, uh, the mask for uh, even just a few minutes. That definitely brightens up, I'm sure, all of our days. Um, any uh, comments from commissioners?
Okay, none. Wow. Um, we will then move on. Um, let's see here. Let's go back and see if we have Trace available. Okay, we'll just move him to the final item then. Um, next item, number eight, a report on transfers uh, to the state and the agency budget status. Kathy, um, also your item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the report in your notebook reflects accrued revenue transfers and allocations to the Foundation School Fund and Texas Veterans Commission, as well as the allocation of unclaimed prizes for the two month period, October 30th, 2020. Total accrued revenue transfers to the state amounted to $244 million for the first two months of fiscal year 2021. Of the $244 million transfer to the state, $240.9 million was the amount of revenue transferred to the Foundation School Fund and $3.2 million was the amount transferred to the Texas Veterans Commission. This leaves us with a 22.6% or $44.4 million increase over revenue to the Foundation School Fund for the same period last fiscal year. Total cumulative transfers to the Foundation School Fund through October of this year amounted to 25.5 $95 billion. Also included in your notebook is the agency's final fiscal year 2020 method of financing summary for the fiscal year ending August 31, 2020. The commission's lottery account budget for fiscal year 2020 was $274.8 million. Of this amount, 81% was it expended and encumbered through the end of the fiscal year. The Bingo Administration budget, funded by general revenue, was $6.25 million, with 88.1% expended and encumbered through the end of the fiscal year. Commissioners, this concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, Commissioners, any discussion? Okay, Kathy, good job. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Next item is a report from... Darlene Brown, uh, your item. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. For the record, my name is Darlene Brown, and I'm an internal auditor for the agency. <clears throat> In your materials are two reports. The first report is the Journal Bingo Operations Division's regulatory enforcement process um, performed within the Compliance Department. Our audit focused on the processes and internal controls in place used by staff to identify, track, and monitor instances of regulatory noncompliance noted through bingo audits, inspections, desk reviews, and complaints received. We noted that the compliance department had not been performing several of the monitoring and tracking activities assigned to them, and therefore we rated the internal controls as major improvement needed. We provided recommendations to improve the internal controls and processes within the compliance function. The bingo director immediately started addressing the findings when we brought them to his attention, did not wait until the final report was issued, so we give him compliments for that. And we expect that our findings will be fully remediated within six months. We've also been following up on prior audit findings within the Turtle Bingo Operations Division. The first item was, is written procedures across the functions within the, the division. They are currently in progress and significant progress has been made. The audit processes have been modified and completed and they were recently updated to reflect the new operating uh, environment resulting from the pandemic. Staffing, some of the positions have been filled where, where they've uh, been allowed to fill them. 
the auditor positions, the align, realignment is still going on and job postings are in progress. And um, there has been some more employee turnover, which places um, a shortage in the division and additional workload burdens on remaining staff. Finally, the ledger account reconciliation project has not started. Uh, the individual that was bought on to, to assist with that project has been pulled into daily operations due to shorting staff, staffing shortages and has not been able to address that activity yet. If you have any questions on reports for bingo operations, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, commissioners, any discussion? Okay, Darlene, thank you so much. Um, um, second, I have one more report. Okay. And the second one's much shorter. It's the uh, agency's warehouse operations. We noted that the agency has sound processes and strong internal controls in place to ensure that warehouse operations protect the agency's assets, secure the facility, and provides a safe work environment for employees and visitors. We had no findings and we rated the internal controls of it as effective. And that is the end of my reports today. And I'll help you to address any questions. Very nice. Uh, commissioners, any comments? Hello. Someone has a comment? Hello. Ah, this is, I'm sorry, sorry. We finally got the uh, microphone working. This is Trace. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Darlene, thank you so much uh, for your report. Trace, um, go ahead. All right. Sorry for the uh, technical difficulties there. We don't, I don't know what was going on. I was unmuted, but it wouldn't let me, wouldn't let me talk. Um, first of all, this is Trace Smith, uh, the chairman for the Bingo Advisory Committee, and I would like to uh, give my report to the Texas Authority Commissioners. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Fields for becoming the uh, new commissioner. Welcome, and we can't wait to sit down with you and answer any questions you have. Um, also, Grace, uh, yes, um, un unfortunately, you're pretty garbled. Um, other commissioners are, is it just me, or can you hear Trace okay? No, uh, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty spotty on my end too. Yeah, mine too. Okay, let's. Spotty, but I'm I'm able to hear what he's saying. Okay, how Perhaps about this? If Trey just goes a little slower, it might be easier. Yeah, just looks slow and um, just pretty direct with what you have to say. Looks like we lost him. Okay, perfect transition. Um, let's uh, head over to the bingo director's report. Tom, this is your item. Um, I'm confident you will have something to weigh in regarding Trace's report potentially. And then uh, look forward to hearing from uh, Commissioner Fields as well. Tom, you got the ball. All right, Mr. Chairman, commissioners for the record, my name is Tom Hansen, Director of the Charitable Bingo Operations Division. On behalf of Trey Smith, my understanding is he had basically three items to discuss. One was that uh, they are nominating um, Corey Harris as the ninth member of the Bingo Advisory Committee. Uh, background investigation has been completed. There were no findings but it will require a vote of the commission to appoint him to that position. The second item on the list um, was, as, as he stated, um, his appreciation for the fact that the governor's office is appointed and Commissioner Fields was nice enough to accept that position as the designated bingo commissioner. Um, I was fortunate enough to introduce her to the group at the last uh, Bingo Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, she was warmly received by the industry. Um, the third item, um, the BAC 
and the industry has reported that unlawful bingo being conducted via Facebook is having a detrimental effect on the potential proceeds used by licensed organization in support of their charitable purposes. They asked for agency action of some kind to assist them. In response to that request for agency assistance, the agency developed an action plan which included the creation of advisory letters which will be directed to Facebook, bingo licensees, the Attorney General's Office, and the Association of Texas District and County Attorneys. It will also be posted on the Bingo Division website. Um, this is in addition to accepting and investigating complaints received by the agency. Additionally, um, you received copies of the bingo compliance audit completed by our internal auditor. As noted in the management responses, we concur with the findings and recommendations and initiated changes to address the issues. This included developing procedures to define the compliance activity, along with direct conversations with the compliance department coordinator related to the duties and responsibilities of that position. We are moving forward in addressing each of the recommendations and plan to come before the commission with updates until we have addressed, addressed all of the noted issues. We are also in the position in the process of filling a vacancy in the compliance department. One other item commissioners as mentioned by uh, Darlene Brown, staff that was brought in to conduct a business process evaluation and restructuring along with the ledger reconciliation, got deeply involved in the day-to-day -day accounting department activity due to staff shortages and was unable to complete the ledger reconciliation. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Tom, thank you so much for your report and having to come in and, and um, uh, do double duty there. Um, regarding uh, Trace's um, absence. And if you could also please pass along to him um, our collective appreciation for his work and effort uh, for Texas Bingo. And we look forward to visiting with him on a future Zoom meeting and or, you know, God uh, willing, um, as soon as possible in person at a future meeting would be, would be great. Um, Commissioner oh, so. Fields, thank you, uh, Tom. Commissioner Fields, any any thoughts? Um, sure. We, we've we've uh, we've been going over with Tom the uh, responses to the compliance audit, and he and he and his folks there are work gonna they're working really hard on getting everything up back up to speed. Um, accountants tend to look at this stuff. We call it uh, areas. Op for opp opportunities for improvement. <laughs> yes. So that's that that's that's what we've got here, and and it'll it'll be uh, worked on. The the fight we've got the um, action steps that are going to be taken with respect to the illegal bingo games, and uh, it looks like <clears throat> the actions are good. We I've looked at the letters that are going to go out, and they look good to go. So so we'll we'll get all that done very quickly and and hopefully it'll have some effect um law enforcement is the ultimate um party that needs to be involved in this because we don't really have much ability to do anything about it but we'll do our best perfect that's well all i've got okay again um commissioner fields thank you for your commitment and um, beginning to, to move forward on a variety of bingo related topics and just it's definitely noticed. So thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay, we will move on then to item number 11. Chairman, yes. excuse me, Chairman. This is uh, Bob Beard, General Counsel. We do need a, a motion and a vote on admitting the new BAC member, Corey Harris to the Bingo Advisory Committee, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there a motion to approve the new BAC uh, member, Corey?
Corey Harris. This is Mark. Go ahead. I'll second. Okay, perfect. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty, sounds like a unanimous uh, vote there. Good job, commissioners. Uh, next item, number 11, um, our esteemed executive director's report. Gary, that would be you. And commissioners, for the record, this is Gary Grief, the executive director. And commissioners, in addition to what's in your notebook today, I have two brief items to share with you. First, on this Sunday, December 6th, we will be launching an updated agency website. This much needed refresh is going to feature a simplified, more mobile friendly design. And of course, all the information and resources that the public has come to rely on will still be present. This initiative was an agency wide effort with staff from many various departments participating to help us develop a logical user focused website design. And there were many hours spent testing the new site to ensure that this is going to be a seamless transition this weekend. And second, as you know, the legislative session is scheduled to convene on January 12th. While the state capitol currently remains closed to the public, our state leadership, along with members of the House and Senate, are discussing how the state's business during this session will be conducted. Our agency's governmental affairs team is closely monitoring what the capital landscape is going to be like during the session. And there are also busy reviewing bills that have already been filed. And our governmental affairs director, Renelda Trevino, will continue to provide you with updates as the legislative session nears and throughout the session. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. I would be happy to answer any questions. Gary, thank you so much, as always, for your continued, just absolute um, leadership on um, on everything there in the building. So we are, are grateful. Uh, commissioners, any comments, questions? Okay, uh, we will move on then. Item number 12, Bob, your item. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, for the record, I'm Bob Beer, General Counsel. Commissioners, item 12 contains five lottery and bingo enforcement matters, tabs A through E in your notebook. In these cases, commission staff either found a licensee violated a statute or rule, or an applicant did not qualify for a license. In many cases, either the respondent failed to appear at the hearing and it proceeds by default, or the staff and the respondent reached a settlement in the form of an agreed order. Occasionally, we have litigated cases, as we do have one today. Tabs A through C are the non-sufficient fund lottery retailer license revocations handled in a single order. Each case was presented at the State Office of Administrative Hearings for revocation of the retailer license because the licensee failed to have sufficient funds in their bank account to cover electronic fund transfers to the commission's account. In each case, the licensee failed to appear and the judge remanded the case to the commission to handle. Tab D is a motion for rehearing, followed by a lottery retailer whose two licenses you revoked at the last commission meeting. The retailer raised no new issues of fact or law that were not previously considered by the commission and the staff recommends denying the motion. This was a retailer who repeatedly violated the rules of a retailer cash and sent a program to make it appear he was selling tickets he was not actually offering for sale. And he, uh, he disregarded our uh, repeated warnings to follow the rules. Uh, so we recommend denying that motion for rehearing. The final item is tab E, it's a bingo agreed order. Uh, there were two conductor organizations who repeatedly ignored our bingo staff auditors request for information to conduct an audit this happened about 10 or more times. Uh, rather than go to a hearing, the organizations each agreed to pay a $2,500 penalty, and the staff recommends you approve this agreed order. That concludes my presentation, and you may take up the enforcement orders in a single vote if you like. I'll be happy to answer any questions. 
Okay, Bob, thank you. Is there a motion to approve orders tabs A through E? So moved, Jamie. Okay, I think we have a move and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Perfect, unanimous. Uh, there are no public comments. So uh, commissioners and all those who are on the Zoom call, we are gonna go into executive session. Um, at this time, I move that the Texas Lottery Commission go into executive session to deliberate personal matters and receive legal advice. Um, as posted in the open meeting notice, is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, perfect. Uh, the Texas Lottery Commission will go into executive session at 1053 and we will return here shortly. And again, today is December 3rd, 2020. Uh, commissioners, you will call in to the um, to the executive session. Okay, the Texas Lottery Commission is out of executive session at 11.06 a.m. I'll give uh, our commissioners a moment to uh, jump on board. Okay, um, I will ask if there's any commissioners that would like to say anything. Um, this is Cindy. As, as we discussed uh, earlier when Tom gave his presentation about the charitable bingo operations, the, the ledger is, has not been reconciled and, and needs to be reconciled. And, and I would like to request that we ask our internal auditor to assist the bingo division to reconcile the ledger. Um, and and I'm hopefully Darlene is, is on the call. Can you, if she is, Darlene, can you tell us if you have the capacity to do that? Yes, this is Darlene Brown, the internal auditor. Um, we definitely have the capacity to do that. Um, and we also have significant budget remaining in our fiscal year 2021 into an audit budget to be able to handle that without any additional cost to the agency. What we would need to do is bring back to you a revised internal audit plan for the next commission meeting, but we can proceed completing or beginning the ledger reconciliation project before then. Excellent. Then, then I would like to make a motion that um, that Darlene that we hire Darlene's firm to do that, and that she do that she does come back with a revised uh, audit plan to include this activity. Wonderful um, comments and recommendation by our esteemed bingo commissioner. Uh, do we have a second? This is Eric. I second. All righty. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that was 100%. Uh, Darlene, you have your uh, marching orders. And again, we are most grateful for your participation to help with, with bingo. Um, that now officially concludes all of the business that we have here with us. Um, on behalf of our lottery commissioners, I would like to thank all of our staff, all of our IT folks, everyone who had uh, participated remotely, whether you spoke or not, your participation on this call is important. And uh, we all are, are grateful to all of our employees daily that are doing the, the heavy lifting and doing all the things that help to advance um, education and, and um, support for our, our Texas veterans as well. Uh, so with that, we will end the meeting and um, I just need a, a second and we'll, we'll vote.
All those in favor to end the meeting. Aye. All set. Aye. Aye. All right, we are done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Thank you all.